on the topic of quote-unquote plant invasions and invasive species, native species, this whole conversation that's in need of updating down in my bottom field. And we see here what would be the case with just abandonment is basically a monoculture of goldenrod, largely, followed by a near monoculture of alder and willow and with some birch on the drier spots. So we could let that happen and be natural and with white pine as well. Um, or we could add oaks there, there, there's about a hundred of them down here, apple, walnut in the drier spots. And actually steer the succession taking place here towards something that's far more diverse, far more abundant in terms of food for both people and other animals, and thus get less dependent, thus become far less dependent on damaging resources, places afar to get those needs that we have because we're eating human beings and we need food. So much of the time, the quote unquote preservation or conservation approach implies that we can just get our food or resources elsewhere with no destructive cost which of course isn't the case. That's why one of the primary principles in permaculture is to get a yield. Make it now, provide yourself with the uh, needs that you have, meet those needs, so you don't demand those needs are met from somewhere else that's distant, where you don't live, where you can't ensure how those needs are met. Um, they can be much more destructive when those productions happen far from you at a distance, never mind, the inherent entropy and cost involved in shipping things, which is only destructive. That's why the most vegan diet is actually the most local diet, because there aren't any vegan oil wells or interstate highways or shipping corridors. So it's just about taking responsibility for what we require to live. And that means usually almost always planting trees here at Swamp White Oak, Burr Oak, some hybrid oaks, black walnuts, some tamarack, apples, of course, pear, you know, a few dozen, dozen other species. But it's just down in this really rough lower field, um, it's, it's a small number, it's about 10 different species. But we're just getting to the point now where these trees are finally getting to be in a place where they'll occupy the canopy. So even if this land is abandoned again, as it was for decades, what we've set into motion now will become the ecosystem that's here. There'll be walnuts and oaks and chestnuts and maybe even some hardy pecans um, and hickories here versus just a few species that would naturally. The marcescent value of oaks is actually one of the really neat um, yields, you could think of it as, that I hadn't thought of until really working with them over the last 10-15 years. The fact that they keep their leaves and provide winter cover in that way is really valuable to wildlife. Of course, I didn't mention black locusts, but that's a big species that we're working with. And those will become the, the uh, canopy everywhere if not managed. So we coppice them and pollard them a lot. Here's a hedgerow that's about nine years old, 40 feet tall. So we're still hacking away at the red maple and the birch and the um, uh, alder and willow and poplar to, to get the ecosystem and the canopy to take that is going to be much more abundant. But we're most, most, we're most away there though. I mean, um, if we were to leave right now, a lot of these would survive and kind of stay ahead of the um, more quote-unquote native succession that's less diverse and less abundant here. Um, but of course, we're not planning to go anywhere and abandon this. This is actually we're getting to a drier zone and the chestnuts here are doing really well. This one's only about four or five years old, 10 feet tall. There's one's 30 feet tall, that's 10 years old, almost bearing. And you know, while we're talking about chestnuts, this is a timber hybrid variety, um, as you can see from the growth form. Some folks may be thinking, well, why not just let nature take its course? Isn't that, isn't that the better route for succession? 
you know, you're talking about changing succession. Why, not, why isn't what's going to happen there of its own accord the best thing? Because isn't that natural? Well, no, because this land has been abused for 250 years. So there's nothing more natural about letting it go into whatever succession, degraded succession has been uh, started into motion by the last 250 years of people than the kind of succession we're pushing it towards. The Marcescent Valley of Oaks is actually one of the really neat um, yields you could think of it as that I hadn't thought of until really working with them over the last 10-15 years. The fact that they keep their leaves and provide winter cover in that way is really valuable. To so in that regard it's really important for folks to understand that it's really not about natural and really we we shouldn't use the word natural um, or nature even. It's not helpful. It's a distraction. And just talk about optimal versus suboptimal. You know, I think it's Penny Livingston Stark who is believed to have said that we are nature working. You know, it's a permaculture phrase. So it's really about you know, how do you want to be nature working? In what ways do you want to work? What do you want to leave behind?